So Alyssa Moyer just found the first morel of the season. This is Morcella Deliciosa, which is uh, what I call the white morel, but it's a subcategory of the blonde morels. Um, they're a little bit rarer than the blondes. Uh, but to, today we've already found a couple blondes as well and uh, one black this morning. So it's been a good day and we'll see what we get today. Boom! Yeah! Hey guys, uh, it's me Cody and today I'm out hunting whites and golden morels. Um, they tend to grow with these big massive white ash. And they do prefer sandy soil, but I do find whites uh, will grow in thick deciduous forests with a lot of leaf litter. That doesn't seem to bother them too much, but they grow a little bit more sporadically. Um, right now, we're almost in June. It's been a really long morel season. You can actually see there's a bunch right here. That's a beautiful little guy. Beautiful white. These are Morcella deliciosa. That's a nice size guy there too. So that's two there, three, four, that one, this is the guy I saw from back on the trail. Oh my god, there's a bunch in here. There's another one. And so usually the Morcella Deliciosa come out just after the blacks. And there's a little bit smaller of a window of opportunity for these guys. But this year, they've been coming out to, like today even, we found a bunch of blondes and a bunch of whites. So, it's not uncommon to see them both in one day. Um, we were just picking blacks a week ago, so it's been a really long morel season, which is amazing. We're super stoked. Alright guys, so today we've got a massive de uh, Morcella Deliciosa. And uh, this was found by Alyssa. Um, it's really big. It's probably the biggest one we've seen this season. And uh, with, with morels, you, you usually want to cut the base off, but uh, because this is such an anomalous one, we're going to be taking this one back to the lab. So normally you'd want to break it off. You don't have to use a knife. That's sort of uh, overkill, I think, with morels. You can kind of easily snap them off. But uh, today I'm going to be taking a section of this mycelium back so that we can clone this bad boy and get this white morel on the plate. So yeah, that's a really big white morel. And we're going to find a bunch more. We've already got a couple. And these big beauties you're going to find growing with ash. And occasionally maple. These ones were actually found with a couple small maples here. And uh, they do like sandy soil, but unlike the other uh, morels, they're not as dependent on it. So like in blacks and same with, uh, with the blondes, you, you really, really need high sandy soil. But um, these guys, like, we, we find them in thick deciduous woods with really nutritious soil, like very rich dark soil, which is uncommon for the other two um, main morels. So yeah. Ooh look at this bad boy. Holy, I'm taking uh, taking it from the base. Normally, you know, you break it off, guys, but I'm taking a culture from this bad boy. This is a beast. Oh man. Wow. Wow. That is beautiful. Oh. You hear a lot of things about the, how about the, you know those mice uh, ash tree basket. It's tough to see, but these morels are actually giving off tons of spores right now. I can literally see them with my eye. It's really tough to to see. They're just letting off tons and tons of spores. It looks like they're smoking almost. All right guys, these are some white morels and some golden morels that we found last week. And they are on the dehydrator as we speak. And uh, I left them overnight. And these little guys, you can actually see the shape. Because these guys uh, propel their spores, they don't drop them like gilled mushrooms and let them float on air currents. They actually push them up out of, uh, out of the pockets that you see, the pores. And you can see that they've deposited them on the roof of the dehydrator. 
you can see the shape. And so yeah, I'll collect these and try and see if I can get them to grow from spore on petri dishes. Usually I use a uh, small cutting from from the base of the mushroom, um, but spores can often get you some pretty unique genetics and some rare mutations. And when you're trying to grow mycorrhizal mushrooms, you kind of want these anomalies, these anomalous uh, genetics, because they'll allow you, uh, hopefully, to get something that will actually bind to a host and get you some growth. Hey guys, this is Cody from Fungicopia, and today I want to show you a product that I really, really enjoy. Uh, it's not endorsed by Casio or paid for, I just want to share it with you guys because it's one of the most amazing pieces of equipment I have as a mushroom forager and outdoorsman. Uh, and this is the uh, uh, Casio G-Shock Rangeman. Um, it's a solar-powered watch with an amazing battery life on it. It has some amazing features like atomic timekeeping, which uh, automatically calibrates itself, and uh, same with the uh, altimeter. The barometer and uh, the temperature and compass. Um, very accurate. It's water resistant for 200 meters so it's pretty much an indestructible watch. It has a, a special shock resistant uh, design so it's very safe for impact. Uh, it's great for hikers, um, bikers, outdoorsmen uh, and really I, I just wanted to show you guys this uh, for its utility as a mushroom forager. It's exceptionally useful if you're trying to collect field data on different species of mushrooms and what environments they're growing in. And so, uh, yeah, that's, I just wanted to show you guys that. I highly recommend the product.